Yeah, slap you, aka Shady Gang. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Yo, this is Big Ball from, from Queens. Kings from Queens. We got a special, yes. special guest. We Burrow Bread. Burrow Bread. Yo, we got a special guest in the building. He came okay. from Brooklyn and he started doing a real major. I've been in his house. You know, he, he's, he's, he's paid. That's all you need to know. I'm not paid, bro. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, watch this. Your wife say his whole name. Anthony. <laughs> no, no. Say the whole thing, white. I can't right now. <laughs> he said, "Yo, earlier he said, yeah, yeah man, Roger.' How uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know him for years, yo? How you not gonna know that name? I know his name. I just, you know, I talk a little funny sometimes. Rogers. <laughs> How do you pronounce the last name, Rogers? That's Rogers. Said. There you go. No, you didn't I say that. You said I said Rogers. It's Anthony Rogerson. Ladies and gentlemen, we got Anthony Rogerson in the building. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank, Thank you. you. I think I'm happy. Thank you. 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 That's good, man. Good to see y'all. Good to see y'all. How you doing, man? We good. We good. We're trying this out. Hopefully everything works out. If not, the white has to go somewhere else. And, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, work, it's working out. We're on, we on set right now. On the, yeah. the undisclosed location. Yeah, yeah undisclosed. Very exotic, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Like the set? You like the, yeah. yeah I like the light all. I like the all. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we, we, we got a little location. But now nah, we got um Anthony in the building. He's going to be speaking on. Real estate and all the stuff. He came from Brooklyn, New York. If y'all don't know where he's from, he gonna elaborate on that. And I'm from the Bronx. Everybody gotta know I'm from the Bronx. Where you from here? Hey, come on, man. I'm like off from Queens, man. See that little Queens? He has to show this shirt. So he goes. Oh, I got Anthony's shirt. I forgot to bring the shirt. I'm gonna give it to him before the show. Like, I'm gonna get all my check. I don't want no shirt. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you, you're gonna like the shirt, though. The shirt is there. You said money on the shirt. I want my check, bro. I want my shirt. Shirts don't pay bills. Nah, man. It's going to not, man. You're gonna have something that nobody else gonna have, though. Yeah, I'm a foreclosure sign. Check with my money. <laughs> this is why we boys. He's probably the only man that can kind of calm me down a little bit. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm here for you know, love. That's yeah, what's up, yeah. Man. I appreciate it, man. So, how it all started, Anthony? Like coming from Brooklyn to Atlanta, what's the transition? How did the journey start? Oh man, I don't know. It's a, it's a long journey. It's a long transition. Um, I guess it's more. It's long. It's too long to kind of talk about, right? Like I, I sum it up, and you know, I've been. I've been in Atlanta 15 years now. Okay. So we came to Atlanta 05, 06. I'm okay. back in 05, 06. Um, just very naive, right? Like, I would love to sit here and tell people, oh, you know, where I am now, I knew this is what I was going to be doing. Right, right. I had no idea where I was going to be. I just knew I wanted something different than where I was. Right, right. So we sit here and we talk about the um, borough brands and white screens, Bronx, we scream Queens, I scream right. Brooklyn. Right. You know, we all come from, you know, we all come from the boroughs, right? Right. So in, in many regards, the boroughs are outside from the Bronx, but the Bronx is a little different than everything yeah, else. Yeah, it's all Florida. It's, it's all Florida. It's completely different. But by and large, it's, you know, we all coming from poverty. Yeah. Yes. Right? Like, we all come from poverty. Yeah, the parts of, yeah, where we come from. Yeah, yeah. we all come yeah. from poverty. So, came down to Atlanta, like, 05, um, really, like, 04. 03, 04, just came to visit, and it was, like, the first time I saw, like, Black affluence, right? right? Like just yes. no, no. Excuse me, excuse me. Came first time ninety six. Okay. Like right? came first time ninety six. It's like you know, like wow, like there's black people living in houses. There's black people saying yeah. hello. Yeah. There's black people saying good morning. Yeah. There's black people saying how you doing. Yeah. Right. Then I would go back home, and you know how we was. I can curse on Yeah, yeah I mean, man. The fuck is you looking at? You know what <laughs> yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? So I, I, so Atlanta had. That, that seed had been planted going back to my the, the mid to late 90s. Right. Um, you know, life happens. You know, you kind of get away from what you're thinking about. Right. Bring it up to speed, 05, 06. Was able to get in position and finally make, make a move. Um, right. Came here. Um, again, no real no real plan. The plan was just to win. Right. right? right. Like, I can't, you know, I, again, I'm, I'm winning, but I'm, I'm 
busting my ass every day. Right. 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 Um, and that's how you know I got to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Right. Didn't come with a necessary plan. The plan was, and, and Anita B was on before me, and she was talking about the New York hustle. Right. Right. What I was, my plan was to hustle. Right. Yeah. Right. My hustle. Right. Right. right, my hustle. Your so hustle. I'm talking to anybody else or anybody that's listening or that will be listening. Work your hustle. That's it. Right. That's the that's the that's the advice that's that it. I share with people. Work for stuff. Work your hustle. Whatever your hustle is. Know right. know what you know what you can do. Right. Right. Um, right. And with, with respect to the show, I don't I don't I don't weigh heavy on New York over everything. Like, I don't right. really subscribe to that. Right. Right. Because I think that that brings the energy here right that i try to stay away from because for me my testimony is atlanta has only shown me love yeah right like i'm saying right i'm gonna keep that you will follow no and, and i totally <laughs> agree the first I, the, the I, first I, shirt I, y'all I, say i have no job in the, the first the, the first shirt i had on out on show was what new york Maybe. born yeah. it was i mean new york bread and mm-hmm. um, Atlanta grown, yeah, yeah, because I really grew up out here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I may have been, I may have a New York influence, right? right? But that's as far that's as it, it goes. I didn't have it, one job in New York, yeah, right? Right. Yeah. So I think I think that's that's important, right? Like for, for all all the viewers that will be doing, like it's, it's very important. Just be just be respectful of. of I, I actually get turned off by New Yorkers who who wave the New York flag too aggressively. Oh yeah, right. It's like if you wanted that. You could have, you could have so stayed in New York. York. Exactly. Right? And I don't mean no disrespect. I just speak my perspective. No, right. And, and that, that, that's really good that you're saying this because I look at it a little different. We are who we are because of New York and what we went through. And we came to a better, not saying that Atlanta is better than New York, but it gave us more opportunity to right. do stuff. So it, we, we use what we had in New York and it just made us enhance whatever in Atlanta more. Yeah. But he's absolutely right. Because you're, you're from yeah. Brooklyn and you know, when you from me, who you are, yo. Yeah, that's what everybody you know. Our, our experience yeah. made us who we are. See, the, you know, and again, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna, they're gonna mold us, right? And, and, and do they break us? Do they build us? No one knows, but yes. they're gonna, they're gonna mold us. That's right? Right. Um, so yeah, so got here in 05, 06. Um, you know, I got a background in finance. Uh, was able to. You was in stock broker at one point. I was, I was an equity trader. I traded in the U.S. and into um, U.S. and domestic equities. Um, so I did that. I worked on Wall Street for over 20 years. Um, before I got into real estate, I've been, I've been, a, I've been in mortgage banking now for three years. But prior to that, I was in, you know, did the whole Wall Street thing. Um, mm-hmm. but, but what Atlanta is now in terms of the financial opportunities, um, the, the opportunities in finance, those opportunities weren't necessarily there when I got here in four five or six. Right. Like, right. and, and uh, so again, I talk to people who. You know, say, well, I don't want to leave New York because I make a hundred thousand in New York. If I go to Atlanta, I'm only going to make sixty thousand, right? That's enough. That's a whole other conversation. But right. you know, I'll be very transparent. When I decided to leave New York and come to Atlanta, I took like a fifty percent pay cut, mm-hmm. right? And I was, and I was, but I was taking up one step forward to go three, one step back to go three steps forward, right? Right. Um. But that's just that was just belief in my hustle, right? Belief in myself, right? And, and, and let me be also transparent. It's just not me. Um, I'm, I was married. At, I'm married now. I was married at the time, and I have a wife on my side who I knew if I was gonna if I was gonna fumble, she was gonna be there to pick me up, right? And if she would have fumbled, I'd have been there to pick her up. Exactly. So that so also right. speaks to having a partner that's by your side that's going to help you and exactly. assist in your so. Our belief or my belief was my belief in us. Right. You could have dropped me on the moon. Right. Atlanta just happened to be the moon. Exactly. And the Rose belief up. in what I knew I could do. And it was it wasn't even it was more or less naive than it was arrogant, right? So I don't right. want to sit here like, oh I knew this shit was gonna work. I was I was young, I was full of energy, I was full of like hope, and I was right. full of and that's what Atlanta kind of presented. Okay. Right? I didn't even have a plan. The right. plan was Get here and figure shit out. That's a fact, because when I met him, he had a fucked up expedition. He, was, <laughs> he wasn't that guy. I'm telling you. Oh, hold on. Oh, oh, of course. You had a house. I've shit. always been that guy. I mean, you might have. I'm not from Brooklyn, so I don't know about that Brooklyn shit. 
I just know about the Union Post. No, no, I seen this. I, I, I'm, I I never, have, when I was on Drink Champs, they never said I was that guy. They had B, they had A. Uh, they didn't treat me like this. And the check guys didn't even clear. And you talk. You just a co-host. I do we want this, 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 like this is like a this is like a this show. Right, this is the next party. That's what I want. Now. But no, but no, he's right. Like no, I had yeah. a, someone called my expedition a jalopy, right? Like he found the thing I was but it's what I had. You know what I'm saying? So we and and and, and the, the true testimony in that is moved here. And yes, I had a house, but we had we were sleep. My wife and I we were sleep on fucking the air mattress right. you know, for like six months. Right. Of shit you plug in and that's what we were sleeping on. No you know what I'm saying? But it was it was like, all right, this is this is an end to a means. This is temporary. Like we're gonna I used to play the Kanye song, it was like over Kanye's first and second album is and the hook was like do, 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 do. wait till I get my money, right? Oh, I, 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 that, I, that, that's that one of my songs. Yeah, that was my like alarm clock in the morning. I had a bullshit job, I hated going to it was miserable. Yo, yo, I, there's a song I'm gonna send you after this by yeah. this dude named John Bell. He, he made a whole song track. Okay. Wait till I get my money. I listen to it every yeah, morning. Wait yeah. till I get my money right. Yeah, so you made a whole song out of it. I got another question. Um, you was in stockbroker, now you're in real estate. What made you transition? Like, because um, a lot of people think, you know, once you get to the stockbroker, I used to think you was that guy because you was doing that shit. Yeah, yeah like, the wife stuff. I know a stockbroker. Yeah, 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 I don't know what he's he doing, but yeah. I know he's he doing it. Yeah. 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 And now you're going to stop. And now you're doing real estate, and you seem like you're more happy now. I don't know if that's the case, but. You know. But I'm also older. With, with age comes wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. Like, into why it's not there yet. Why see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get older. Don't let me get older. Yeah. Um. But no, no. So, so what made me switch was I had been in 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 the Wall Street thing for some time, like a very long time. I got I got I was fortunate. I got blessed, and I was introduced to Wall Street at 15 years old. Oh. So through, um, I was in a program. It was called the Student Sponsorship Program, and the students the Student Sponsorship Program was a program for inner city kids. I mean, I be building. Yeah, exactly. And um, I got connected with a guy by the name of Tom Gallagher um, back in like 89, 90. And Tom had some connections on Wall Street, and I did a summer internship. Right? Mm. Um, I did a summer internship. I was 15. I was like, I was, in, I was between my ninth grade and 10th grade year in high school. Right? And I did a summer internship. And that's how I got, inter that's how I got introduced to Wall Street. Right? Wow. Um, at that time, I was working in the mailroom. Like, I didn't, I didn't even know what a, a corporate job was. Like wow. They take kids from the projects, go and go to you show up downtown Manhattan, push this heart around. All I want to know is how what much I'm getting paid. It sounds like a Wolf of Wall Street movie uh -huh. right now, bro. So, it sounds like you was, um, what's the, um, the, um, the, the, um, he's funny, um, he big too. I can't think of his name right now. He's kind of funny. The yeah, dude in, um, come to the, no, no. <laughs> Fuck, what's the nigga, um, the Man, movie with Eddie Murphy and, um, Martin Lawrence and all like, boring. And what's the um, the skinny? That was that was Chris Rock. Chris Rock when he was pushing the car around. Yeah, no, that's how we used that's to be. Like, yeah, we used, yeah. To be, used, yeah. To be, used to be like that. So I so I did that. Um, so like my first summer, I, I did that. I, I pushed that around. I pushed the car around or whatever. Um, and I used to go to as the mail as a mailroom clerk. I used to have to go to all the floors and all the different departments in the office or whatever. And you know, again, so to tie it into New York, you know, we very. Very uh, we observe, yeah, right. Yeah. So in moving around to these different floors in the in the company, I would see some disgruntled workers, right, who would just like I would say this is no disrespect, but wearing khakis and shirts that was too big, right. And then I would go upstairs to the trading floor and I would see all the guys with the and, and the woman with the fancy pinstripe suits on. Right. This was before dress down Fridays right. and all that, right. like with cufflinks and all. And I'm like, this shit just looks like money. I don't know what they're doing. Wow. They're doing a whole lot of fucking screaming and shit. I don't know what none of this shit means, right. but this looks like money, right? Wow. Um, so every summer, I would go back. And as I would go back, I went from doing the mail room, then I would work in a different apartment, different department, and I was just trying to get to that trading right. department because I knew that's where the money was. Right. I still ain't no shit, right? right? But I just knew where the money was. Right. Like after about three or four years of you know going back, going back, I finally made it to the trading floor and started rubbing elbows with some people who learned some stuff. Um, and then when I got out of college, when I graduated college, they offered me a job. So when they offered me a job, that's how I was. That's how I started doing my training. This is all coming. You in the projects in Brooklyn doing all this? Yeah. So like, how are you like moving? Because like a lot of a lot of people want to know like. 
yeah, you 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 got a success story and you made it and you're trying to move further in your life, but like you're in Brooklyn doing all this shit. It ain't easy to be walking through the streets of New York and go downtown and be with all these yeah. stuff. Yo, stop all all this, yo, I swear, this reminds me like all the movies I watched from Ballroom and all that yeah. other stuff, bro. Was well, it like that? Yeah, but no, but he's coming from the hood, though. So yeah, yeah, no, it, was, it, was, it was like that to a degree, but the truth about us, or the truth about me, I'm a chameleon. You want to put me in a room, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a navigator. Right, right? Like, there's a lot of things that I didn't know, Um, but I, and I would tell anybody, don't, don't, we have this, I think we mess up when we say fake it till we make it, right? Because if you, if we only hear fake it, right, right, yeah. we're not learning nothing. No, we're not. Right. So I was never afraid to say I don't know this. I don't right. know. And, 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 and then I was also blessed with I had some I had some mentors um, who were like brothers to me. Shout out to my boy Troy, uh, Chris Reed. I had a woman by the name of uh, Evelyn Collier who was also a black woman who kind of took me under her wing and um, just kind of sold into me. Yeah. Um, so I was just I was just working the room. Yeah. I was just working the room, and then slowly but surely, with anything like if you go to McDonald's right now, you go to Chick Fil A, and you've never worked at Chick Fil A, you look behind the register at Chick Fil A, and you look at them, that shit looks like chaos, yeah. right? I just explain that shit to the same thing. You look at a trailer floor, and people screaming. We screaming, and I, but I know we know what we're talking about, right? The person in Chick Fil A when they screaming about the fries and the milk, yeah, I'm just waiting for my number two. I don't know what none of that shit. Like, no, that makes sense. But they speak in their language, exactly, right? If somebody come on the block, we talking our we shit. We talking our shit, yeah. If you ain't never been on the block, you don't know what nah, we're talking about. Exactly. It's the same. It's the same stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, it's the same stuff. So, um, kind of, you know, kind of master that, like, respectfully. Are you out of it? Yeah, I'm done. You I done? retired at. 42 from from that i'm not i don't, I don't you know. still keep the stocks when you still when the, you keep yeah, the, you're oh, older than i thought you know? i'm 45. Yeah, 45. Yeah, I'm not. Look this way at 45. <laughs> <laughs> i ain't even I mean, so you know, you know, you know, you know, so do you know, so 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 do you do you still do it do you still do it no i don't i don't i don't i mean i have my own personal investments um i I mean, I have a natural, not a natural, I have a trained ear to listen to what's going on, like okay. in the financial markets. Okay. Um, but in terms of, like, I don't do anything professionally um, when it comes to uh, investments. Okay. Right? I don't advise anybody. I, I mean, I have a casual conversation. Um, but again, it ties into, you know, understanding. It helps me understand my job now because I still talk with, you know, people about, one of the biggest investments that they're going to make in their lives, right. which is which is real estate, real estate, right? Um, so, you know, again, I'm I'm a, in tune with it, but I don't. It doesn't pay any of my bills anymore. Okay. So, okay. Um, which is there because it leads me to my next question. You know? My next question is like, uh, a lot of black people are like don't understand getting and buying a home, owning a home. So we kind of scared because we think it takes so much more money than it does. Right. So what are your advice to like black people that are trying to move up but don't know how? Right, right, right. Well, I'll say this. My, my advice is not just to black people because white people spend money too. And exactly. Like, like money. Yeah, real talk. Right. So <laughs> hey, white people. No, and I love <laughs> you. I, I, I get my money, yo. I get your I get your credit. So 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 the reality is, is this, right? Like we just 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 um traditionally we don't come from home ownership. No. Right. So we don't even we don't and the same thing applied to stocks and all of that, but we don't come from, by and large, we don't come from home ownership. So we don't even understand the conversation that we should be having. So all of it is so distant to us, right? So people think, oh, you got to have 20% to put down on a home. Yeah. That is not That's the, the biggest perception. You need over like 10 grand to put down and then you can get out. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that is not correct. So, so the correct answer is you have some um, programs where you can get a house with 0% in it. Right. By and large, you, the, the, the most common loan program for first time buyers and people with challenged credit scores, and I would say challenged credit scores is anywhere between like a 620 and a 650. Um, 620 to 680 is an FHA loan. An FHA loan allows a person to put three and a half percent down on a house, right? So, what does that mean? What does that mean in numbers, right? So, if someone's trying to buy a house for um, 200, a $200,000 house, the down payment is going to be three and a half percent. That's seven thousand dollars, right? So when you tell somebody, oh, wow, you, all you need is $7,000, and also not all you need, but your down payment is $7,000 versus, you know, 20%, um, for, versus a 20% down payment. $7,000 is, is somewhat attainable more than 20%, um, 
more than 20% is. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Um, so where I find joy in, 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 let me take a step back. You, you mentioned about um, seeming happier, right? Mm-hmm. And, like, and like, how did I leave, right? Like, you, right. in anything you do, like y'all doing, y'all doing this, which is awesome. At a certain time, right now y'all got momentum. Right, y'all excited. Like, y'all got y'all excited like, about it, right? It's it's, 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 it's this. Y'all yeah, on this. Yeah. At a certain point, it will plateau. Then you'll get another <laughs> burst of energy. It'll go further. But at a certain point, it's just going to do this because yeah. your vigor for it is right. going to leave. Right? Mm-hmm. It was like we've mastered that. We need yeah. something. We need something big, mm-hmm. right? So after doing the Wall Street thing from sixteen to forty-two, sixteen years, fifteen years old to forty-two years old. That's a long yeah, time. Is. Right, like we know people who work city jobs in New York, they do their 20 years yeah. and they split, right? Yeah. 16 to 42. I was really just burned out. Um, just really, really, meant I had no interest in it. I never had interest in it. It's, it I really just had interest in, interest in the bread, like, right. I never had interest in my job, right? So you wasn't happy when you, no, no. You so mean, was happy. Money, no, to say I wasn't happy was to, was to say I was, di- I was unhappy, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I was, I was, I was indifferent, yeah. yeah. I was yeah. like, many of us we don't have the we don't have the luxury of being happy. That's a whole nother kind of, right. just, excuse me. We don't have the luxury of doing a job that makes us happy or having a career that makes us happy. That's just not the luxury that we have. No. We out here trying to we come from unemployment. Exactly. Right? Like 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 that's a whole we come from I come from welfare. Right. Right? So if I come from welfare, right, I have to, my next step up from welfare is job. Right? The next from job is career. Right? The next from career is ownership. So many of us don't get from welfare no. to job. No, no, no. Right? How 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 is how is a person who was coming from welfare, right, supposed to think like an owner? Right. Exactly. Right? We don't we don't we don't get that at the quote unquote dinner table. Exactly. Right? And never mind like that sounds too American dreamers, right? No. Like we don't get our casual conversations when we on the stoop in the hood in front of the building on the block, whatever, we're not talking about ownership. We're not talking about ownership of nothing. We, somebody you know get a job, we say, yo, how you how you get on? Right. Exactly. How, you, yo, how you get on? We don't talk equity and nothing. We don't know nothing about that. So we so far behind. We are so far behind. Right. No, no, no and, and I want I want to point that out is that the talks. The talks because and white note for me and around me for a long time is what kept me in this neighborhood where we at now is uh East Cobb. And when I um bought my first house with my wife was in Woodstock. So so but the rewind that was our whole nature from our culture, and my mom was one of the biggest freaking ones in my culture, it was like, yo, why are you not moving in a black neighborhood? And I'm like, yo, I lived in a black neighborhood all my life. Right. I want to be somewhere where it's a little bit more, you know, I want a different journey. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I, I know who I am or whatever. So then when, and everybody was hitting me in the head like, nah, you need to go ahead and buy a house out in Southeast or whatever. Right. And I'm like, I live in the Southeast. When I first moved there in 94, I lived on Washington Road. My two, the two dudes I didn't even know had an apartment for $520 a month with a bathroom in a bedroom. You know how it is when you come to New York, right? you got a bathroom in a bedroom. It's like, yo, you got some dress, right? I'm like, we're coming downstairs, right, right, a town right, right, This right. is this 94, right, right. I'm struggling out. But at the same time, when I lived there, and I lived on the east side, and a little bit in Bankhead, I, I, I bumped into a couple of people that was just like, well, really, my wife. My wife was like, you're not staying here. Right. She lived there before. Right. She was like, you're going to the north side. I'm like, yo, why are you pushing it off? My people want to She was right. like, we're going to raise kids. We're going to the north side. Right. Now, this is no no disrespect to anybody on the east or south side. You know, you know what I mean? I'm saying it's not, not a... Not a, a, not a not we don't have to. Like, so all the yeah. time we feel, we feel like we got to say no disrespect. We feel, I know. I feel, we, feel, we feel this guilt of... I do feel the, I'm I getting feel away from like, y'all like, niggas. This shit is... There's a survivor. It is. Yeah, I understand. It is. But what I'm saying, you got a kid in college right now, and now you got another daughter going to college. Yeah, and that's what it was. That's what I wanted to get to. Going back to what we said where we're from, you know, with me leaving school early, and I went to a, I went to Thomas Edison out in New York, mm-hmm. which was a good school. Mm-hmm. But still, just 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 our mindset of the the 
I, I don't want to bring a generation before us, but it was kind of uneasy on us to figure our way. Yeah. So I said, I need to go to a place where I'm away and I'm like, I'm starting it from yeah. here. Now, yeah. mind you, we struggled in, in East Island. Yeah, yeah. But my whole mentality where everybody's like, yo, why you are? I was like, because y'all taking our kids to private school. Why not stay in the neighborhood where people yeah. where they can just go to the school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all, and, then, and I don't know if it's a big difference. Y'all would know more than me. You would know more than me. But out here, you can still rent in good neighborhoods where in New York, yeah. you know how hard it is to rent in a good neighborhood? Yeah, 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 yeah. You so, know what I mean? Yeah, so, so, so to speak to that a bit is we, we're, we're, you, if you want a, a good education for your children, right? you just have to be in a very good school district. Right. Now you're gonna pay if you're not in a very good school district and you live someplace that you know the schools are okay, the houses may be a little bit cheaper. But now you're gonna pay to send your kids to private school. Exactly. So you're gonna pay one way or the other. Either you're gonna pay in those property taxes to, some be good, to be in a good neighborhood, or you're gonna pay um to send your kids to private school. Either right. way you pay. Either way you're you paying. have to just decide where you wanna be in terms of what makes you comfortable. Exactly. Right? And 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 what what made me? I live in I live in South Fulton. Shout out to South Fulton, city of South Fulton, and all, and all, all the people, all the people there. Um, I love South Fulton, and and there's some things about South Fulton that I don't love. Right, right. But they're all intertwined with with with, with us, right? Like we're, we're not we're not we're not monolithic, right? Like exactly. we're very nuanced, exactly. Right, and with us, you're gonna get the great and you're gonna get the not so great, right? Right, and you have to decide as an individual. We can be friends, right. right? But what you're willing to put up with may not be what I'm exactly. willing to put up with. And as I said, I'm 45 years old now. What I was willing to put up with at 35, my patience is a little bit shorter at 45. Right. right? So, um, you know, it's 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 no right answer. No, the answer is what works best for you and your family. Exactly. And, and and that that's what should be respected. And that's the only thing I really had because I wasn't. I and, and me and my wife a couple of times going to buy a house, but but until then I was like, well. We're gonna just. I just want to keep my kids around a good school. They definitely don't want to pull them out and bring and them back. I want to keep them around. Yeah, that's good for all your kids. Like I was telling my son the other day. Like nowadays, um, before we didn't see anybody. No, nah, that was another thing. Now yeah. you graduated, you went to college, but I didn't know a lot of people that did that. Exactly. You know, so it's like now every, all our kids. All of our kids. So all it's like it's just different for them, you know. And it's different. For, we we provided a life so y'all can graduate and do things that we didn't. We was able to do exactly like because my parents didn't. I didn't see them them graduate, and then my dad he had his own business. I look up to my dad because of that. Right. Um, not you know, not my real dad. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. <laughs> you know, That's a whole other story. I know what it is. Yeah, but we know you could have stayed. You know, like, you know, right. Dad, you know, like, like, he raised me, and right. he was the first black guy to show me that you know, he owns his own business, and he always was mad Arab, 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 Arab. I mean. He was real arrogant. Like, okay. he was, and he's Jamaican, so he's real arrogant. Always, always mad. You don't came at the gays, the Jamaicans, the Mexicans. The Mexicans you know, the Jamaicans think they're the shit. Now, I'm, 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 I'm a Jamaican. They think they're shit. So he always had that at the mentality like, I'm a shit. I'm like, nigga, you Jamaican, nigga. Keep that flag and keep moving. <laughs> But, what are you listen, 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 this is the uh, the view shared by Swipe. <laughs> that nothing uh, to do? Uh, have nothing that to do with Anthony Robinson and my business. I love the Jamaicans. I love the gays. I love the Mexicans. I love the Mexicans. I love them all. You know what I'm saying? Trying to, trying to jam me right now. Nah, but I'm, I'm, I'm but to, to put it all in perspective, man, we just, we, we, we love, like, like, having this conversation on the, the change of the generation. And, and, and like I said, we're this. It's not to be an arrogant show. It's just really, like I said, it's a it's a, it's a New York influence show. And all we're doing is just speaking to people like this. I, I get with Anthony. I know. I get exactly. Like, he, he was said. like, "Well, why y'all keep just saying?" Them? I said, "Cause we bone bred. That we have other people from other cult. Like, yes, you ain't got to just be from New York to be on this show. No. But we like to say, how did New York influence you some kind of way? Like, yeah, that's that's way. way. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, one of the things too, I was, you know, I guess. In, in fairness, I would, I would say, well, how how have how has Atlanta influenced us? Right, yes. right. Like, and I'm not, and I'm not, again, you know, I'm not trying to shy away from, yeah, we knew we're, we're, we're New York, but one of the reasons why I left New York is because I couldn't afford to live right. the way I wanted to live in New right. York, right? And why was that? That was because gentrification came about, yes. right? But what we don't think about what New Yorkers and I have. 
family that my son is born and raised here, right? My brother-in-law is a original AT alien, right? And something that my brother-in-law said to me was, was you know, when y'all came here, <laughs> when y'all came here, y'all pushed the values of houses way yeah, up, we, we did. right? So yeah. that's no that's no different than how our neighborhoods got gentrified. Exactly. Right? We just, we did, we did black on black gentrification. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, we yeah. the same right. to them that they did to us. Right. So, so I think, I think, again, I think, yeah. I think it's very important to be respectful of, 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 of that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and definitely. And think about, and also, you know, speak to, you know, how Atlanta has in, influenced us. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm way more, I talk to people, like, on, on aisle seven in Target, how you doing? Good morning. I never did that. Yo, my, my first my first train. running on the on the train, I remember this vividly, bro. Um dude just passing by me. I was getting off at Oakland Station, man. He was just like, what's up? So saying what's up to okay, me on the train. What's up? <laughs> I'm like, I'm setting myself up. Like, okay. I'm like, okay. Yeah, I'm like, yo, what's up? And he said, nah, folk. I'm just saying what up. I saw you, so you the Jersey, New York, which y'all say, what up, right? I'm like, he's like, I'm just saying hello. I said, oh, shit, yeah. no, he's actually a thumb dude. He's actually yeah. just saying yeah, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, um, but yeah, so I, did, did I answer your question about um about the whole real estate thing and just, you know, people yeah. think, thinking about, you know, right. so, so, so that's yeah. what I want to, I want to kind of speak to that really quickly about right. anybody that, you, um, talk to a real estate professional, right? Like, and, and what I, what I mean by a real estate professional, if you're looking to purchase a house, you're going to have two main people, um, to talk to you're gonna have your real estate agent and you're gonna have your loan officer. I serve as a loan officer, right? My job is to find out how much you can qualify. Okay. And how we find out how much you can qualify for is we take a look at your credit. Um some of the some of the some of the misnomers or whatever on on, on credit is we're like, well I owe thirty thousand dollars right on my credit card. What you owe is not important. It's what your monthly payment is. Right. Right. So you know what you mean. No, I know. <laughs> you know. I know. I said, if you sit out this segment, no, no, no. Let me say how I know. Let me say how I know. It's, is there it's, a mute button? No, no. no, 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 no. Where's the button? No, look, I'm going to tell you the job real quick. It's about like how much you make and how much you're paying a month. Correct. Right. So, so that's so that. So Dwight is actually correct. I'm messing with Dwight. Yeah. But that's called your debt to income ratio. Yes. Okay. So, so, so the two main things that go into how much you can get approved for is your credit score. Well, three main things. Your credit score. No, not. Sorry. What we look at. The two main things is we look at your credit score or we look at your debt to income ratio. Okay, your debt to income ratio, and I'll explain this in most lamest terms, right? Like you make a thousand dollars a month, right? Right now, you make a thousand dollars a month. Your current bills are your debts. When we add those debts up, you owe nine hundred dollars a month, right? Right. So your debt to income ratio is a ninety percent debt to income ratio. So that means you owe out ninety percent of what you're making, right? All right. You're coming to me, you was like, I want to borrow money because I want to buy a house, all right? You make $1,000 a month. You currently already owe $900 a month. Right. You're yes. trying to come to me to borrow $500 more a month, right? Right. I'm going to look at those numbers. I'm going to say, all right, well, you make 1000 you owe 900 You're trying to get 500 more from me. That means you would be owing exactly. $1,400 a month, but you are, you only bring home 1000 Exactly. Nobody's gonna loan you money because your scale is unbalanced. Yes. Okay, yes. so there's different percentages that you have to be below. That thousand dollars, you want to be below fifty five hundred. Sorry, five hundred and fifty dollars a month. That means you have a fifty five percent debt to income ratio. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's your existing bills plus your new mortgage. Right. Um. So that's really important. Um. A lot of people. Um, are concerned about student loans, how do student loans uh, hurt me? And it does student loans hurt a lot of people from getting into mortgages. Um, and that's a whole other segment. And um, But most importantly, I would say anyone that is watching this that wants to get educated about the process, um, give me a call. Okay. Shameless plug. My number is 678-359-3574. Or you can follow me on Instagram. We have these conversations on Instagram. My Instagram is everybody say keys it's a play on words like you get happy you say everybody say cheese everybody, everybody say keys all right so you like your keys for your house you can dm me but we can have a larger conversation just talking about how how the process works for home ownership okay but most importantly have a job have solid credit and don't have too much debt those are the things that will help you into home ownership that's what's up that's what's up man and that's what we got to here because people don't know a lot of people Perception and think they 
mean more than what they really do. Because we're not taught, like you said, we're not taught growing up. They don't see these dads and uncles having houses and all that. We live in apartments and everybody's six cousins and seven brothers and like, shit like that. Like, like duck. Yes. <laughs> no, nah, man. Actually, duck is a good food. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? <laughs> Duck is good. You don't eat duck? I've had duck. Duck okay. is very oily. I'm, but I don't want to eat duck everything. I don't eat duck. Eat you eat duck dynasty. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he, <laughs> shout out to my Cambodian family. He always think we eat duck. I don't duck. got nothing just a Cambodian. <laughs> we don't eat duck. Every, the Mexicans. You're like, yeah, yeah, always eating duck. I'm like, you yeah, are always <laughs> eating duck. Every time you was eating duck cereal the other day. Also, what the fuck are you duck cereal? Like, but anyway, first of all, duck is expensive, girl. So yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, I got and real quick before you go. I, speaking of um, credit, so someone came to my family, but was giving their advice to me and wifey about um, you know our credit is going up. We worked on credit is going up, whatever. But some of the advice we got was um, just like you said earlier. When wifey freaks out, she handles the credit. Stuff. She freaks out when the there's um, the like it's higher on there what it's supposed to be the usage. And the usage. Oh. She bugs out on the uses of she'd be like, yo, send me five dollars real quick. Gotta bring that back down. Because right. she said it hits your credit. And she said one time it hit our credit her, her, her score dropped like a hundred points. Well so so what we're talking about here is is your is your credit usage. So let's just say you have a credit card and your your, your maximum that you can put on that credit card is a thousand dollars. Right. Right. If you read anything and say you shouldn't have your usage Higher than thirty-three to thirty-five percent. So that means if you if your, if your max is a thousand dollars, you should your bill should not be your current bill with them should not be over three hundred and fifty dollars. Mm. Right, right. If you if your max is a thousand and your bill is eight hundred dollars, that means you have an eighty percent usage. Mm. That means you using all the money that they gave. You, right, right. So that can be looked at as negative. Right, not all the time. Right. Um, it's really about a pattern, right? Like if you use your credit card, you may you may use it up to ninety five percent usage, but your pattern shows that you pay it off every month, right? Right. But if you carry a high usage, that's basically saying, and if and credit card companies want you to carry a high usage because that's what they charge you the interest on, right? Right. And let's just take out a credit card, like you know, if I if I loan you money, that's what a credit card does. They loan you money, right? right? And I tell you, as long as you hold that money, I get twenty percent interest on that, right? Right, like you, I want you to hold that as long as you can. Right, right. So, um, you want to, what, what, as the consumer, what you want to do is try to keep your usage as low as possible, whatever that is. Right, because life happens. Right, right. you might need to. I was taught. Look, I have my grandmother was really smart with, with 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 money, and she taught me about money. So I was I was blessed and fortunate to have her um, to teach me about that. What she would always say to me was, "You don't use your credit cards for um, wants." Right, you use your credit card for needs. Mm -hmm. Right, you keep your credit card in case the refrigerator breaks. Right. Or well, she would always say, you, my, my family was from North Carolina, and we was in New York. She was always saying, you, 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 you keep your credit card in case you got to go home, home for home in North Carolina. You okay. need emergency stuff. Right. Okay. Right. But what happens with us? Often we get our credit cards, and they're they're predatory. The credit card companies they come out there and they know we don't know nothing. Right. Right. So they give us these cards. Right. right. If we can qualify. Most times it happens on college campuses. I remember when yes, I was in college. The first so. time I stepped yes. on campus, the first day they yes. had all of these credit cards. Now I ain't never had shit. I ain't have nothing. You give me this card and you're like, oh, you got five hundred dollars on it. Right. I'm like, damn, I can get some nights. I'm good. It's a and right. now, I ain't gonna lie, I a pair of tens with my first credit card. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. so so but it, but it's human it's human nature, right? Like you you give you give somebody access to something that they've never had before. Right. Right, and again, a lot of our, our stuff is we're skewed, right? Like because when you when you come from poverty, all of us coming from poverty was always trying to look like we had oh. more than what we had, oh. Oh. trying to impress the other broke motherfucker oh. that's standing right there. We all broke. We live in the same building. Oh. I know you broke, right? Oh. But now, so we get these credit cards. We get a credit card by whatever way we get it, and now we don't. We're not educated on, it. right? And that that. Destroying our credit, it gets us in a rut that takes us years to get back. Come back. But all of that is by design. That's a whole nother conversation. That's a whole nother conversation. Another, another show. But um, so that so, so to answer your question, it's the usage part, right? You want to keep right. your usage as low as possible. Right. Um, and the other thing about credit is, um, pay your credit card on time. Yeah. Like late payments yes. really, 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 really yeah. hurt you. So, 
Um, there's a lot of different moving parts. It's like it's too much to kind of consolidate. No, and get no, I just wanted to shoot that at you, but I appreciate yeah, that. That makes sense. I yeah, yeah, that. yeah, that's yeah, yeah, exactly. We appreciate that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I charge for mixtures. <laughs> <laughs> your credit right now is not doing no, it. No, no, no. And he's right. I know something. It's the one when we went to New York. We was looking with, back in the day before that gentrified freaking Myrtle Ave. And remember, we was like the, it was like a fire. The house was all messed up by the projects, but each freaking driveway was like it was like. All the best cars yeah. ever. That's still <laughs> That's still the houses was just torn down. Yeah, but but, but, each one. but why that? Why that is right? I had a friend. I had a friend some years ago, and he bought a house. He bought a house in Jersey. Same day he bought a house, he bought some sneakers. Right? He posted the sneakers on Instagram and didn't post, and didn't post the house. <laughs> Real talk. Wow. We're psychologically damaged, and this is not. It was this. The, he and I talked about it. That's so sharp in so many levels. No, but here's you know, it, it, so. So what it really is is, it's it's. You're gonna get likes on the sneakers, yep. because mm -hmm. your friends, the people that are in your circle, they can see themselves getting those sneakers. Mm -hmm. Those they sneakers can't. are attainable in their in, in our minds, mm -hmm. but a house, so it's, far like, it's so far fetched from. It's like. I don't, I don't even know how to. I I no. I personally help people. That's true. I'm deep. I'm like the fuck. Yeah, no, no, like, I don't even know. You probably don't even know how deep that's that's super deep. Yeah, you know? but, but I I've had people that I've helped get homes, and we're we're at the close, and the close is when you do the final paperwork, right. and you know they're in their late forties, early fifties, and I've watched people literally cry, like I never thought this could happen, yeah. like I never thought that this could happen, so. The, the, so for the for the viewer or the listener, the the best thing that you can do if you're sitting there and you like I want a house, but I don't know where to start. The, the best thing to do is to talk to a professional because there's so many different programs. The housing market is a little tough right now, but there's a lot of programs out there for first time buyers um, who don't have assets. Oh, you may have some assets. People who have jobs, you have money in your four hundred one k. A lot of people don't know that they can use money from their four hundred one k and buy a house. Um, but so so so. To talk about the whole sneaker house thing, he was like, "Yo, I could never post my house, man. I got, I got, I got cats in the hood right now that they, they still live, that. they still live with their mother. Yeah. yeah, a house like that ain't even something that that is so far yeah. Yeah, from yeah. reality, yeah. right? But but again, we talk off air or on whatever. We talk about faking it until we might have been hard. Talk yeah. about faking it until we make it. Like we have to have we spend too much time amongst ourselves." Talking about, I have zero patience and tolerance for talking about nothing. Yes, White tells me that. Me, that's why. That's why, why I know. That's why you said you scroll his yeah, name. Right 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 right. He's always yeah. like, "All right, Dwight, you ready to go home?" Nah, like, bro, I can't. Like, 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 like I, I bullshit. I'm like mad drunk. He's like, "You ready to go home?" Like, no, 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 no. Because we spent too much time. Like, this is just my opinion. Obviously, like, we. I'm all for bullshit. I'm all for having a good time. Yeah. Joking. But we have to. If we, she's a she's an inspector. Right, I'm a loan officer, right? Like we can't be sitting here for two hours talking about nothing right. and not spending time talking about the elevation mm -hmm. and, and, and connecting. Exactly. And I think oftentimes, particularly us as black men, why you black? Oh, you can't vote. I'm black. Man. All right. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's now can't vote. Uh, us, 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 us as black men, we spend too much time talking about what our grandfathers and our uncles and the men in our lives, yeah. what we saw them talk about and what we, we saw right. them do, right? And right. they were doing what they were doing in the time of their right. time. Mm -hmm. But we didn't come up learning about talking about how to progress. Right. Right. How to how to how, like I'm gonna have a call. Like how did y'all get this? How did cause we talked about yeah. like I want to do a podcast. Like how did y'all get these mics? How does this work? We don't spend enough time talking about that. Yeah. Exactly. The the betterment and if you, behind yeah, if you do it's like, yo, this motherfucker always so serious. Like, you don't never, but I don't have that much time to talk. Like, time is limited. And mm -hmm. and 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 even though this too, because one of our segments is game changers, and I mean, and one of our best conversations that we're probably gonna have is with people. Our whole thing is people from New York who's behind like some of the machines in Atlanta, like like with Shot and Blue being from New York, like behind Ludacris, with with. Um, Vegeta being behind Ti from mm -hmm. day one, mm -hmm. from Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And 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 that and that and in that sense of what you're saying is is some of the conversations is what what 
we can't talk about nothing building, then what are we talking about? I don't want to talk about That's why I was like, yeah, I don't want to hear how. That's why I kind of targeted away from the celebrity to say how your machine works. I want to know who works the machine behind you. Right. More so than we got to keep flashing the artists in front of you. Right, 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 right. I get it. And and that's just, that's just, that's the only way we're going to, we're going to progress. You know, so. um. But right. yeah, I'm, 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 I appreciate you coming no, through. I appreciate, I appreciate y'all having me. If it's an honor, appreciate um, Chet still has a great conversation. We might talk to about that. We definitely got paid now for this conversation, bro. <laughs> yeah, we got, um, I know Kenyatta probably, you probably flew him on the end of the day. He'd be going out of town and stay. He'd stay for you. He'd be going out of town and stay for but where yeah. do I get paid? Y'all keep. <laughs> 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 Kenyatta, it's Kenyatta, man. We need you at this mixer, though. Yeah, no, nah, it's COVID. Seriously. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah. Can we FaceTime? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, nah. nah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if the check's so going in, we can do whatever we want. I'm just. But nah, nah, I appreciate no, I appreciate y'all having me. Nah, I appreciate it. For real. Dwight, any questions? I mean, I mean, I'm. You pretty much answered everything, yo. I'm happy that you came on, spoke to people because I like to see people that made it and successfully made it and it's rich as shit because we around so much negative shit, people faking it that don't yeah, make like it. You know? Now we got somebody that's real that made it and you keep progressing and shit. That's all okay. I wanted to have somebody that's made it and still progressing. Right. And that's the thing too. Like people we didn't make like I didn't like respect me. I thank you. Thank you for acknowledging that. But I didn't I don't I'm not bro, it ain't no making it out here. Like making it means is you stopped, right? right like, I, right. like, like I gotta get up every day, right? Like we all have to get up. Every, still you know, but, yeah, but we all have we have to get up every day and make this thing make this thing turn. Like if you get to the point, like yo, I made it. Shit, that's a. Excuse me, I'm sorry. You gotta. You Jay Z ain't made it yet. Yeah. He's a fucking billionaire. Yeah, like you know, you know what I mean. So yeah. we we out here, we're making it. We're making the best of what we have. Yeah, right. Um. Yeah, then we just gotta keep on keep helping each other out. So, yeah. But if anybody watching, as I said, if you have any other questions with regard to real estate, uh, have, you can catch me on uh, Instagram, which is Everybody Say Keys. Uh, my office number is six seven eight three five nine three five seven four. It's been a pleasure being here. Thank you, man. Thank you. Guys. Thank you, Thank you guys. Guys. I want to clap. All right. All right. That's it. Well. I'm Big Maw from Queens, came from Queens. You know what I'm saying? This is White from the Bronx. We got some shit crazy next week. So tune in. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. We got some.